episode 82, part 3 of Africa's premier sports video podcast, the Three Quarters Podcast. Also remember to jump onto the hashtag Road to Japan to support the Kenya Simbas as they are looking to qualify for the Rugby World Cup in 2019 in Japan. I'm Dimima Duffield. And I'm Naro Kamuya. No more rugby? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we dive straight into football. Uh-huh. Uh, transfer news. Yeah. So Marseille t- uh, are in talks uh-huh. with Chelsea's Olivier Giroud yeah. representatives. Yeah. And also Juventus are looking to sign Paul Pogba. And they're willing to let go, you know, of several stars uh-huh. to, to, to raise money yes. to get Paul Pogba. Yeah. What else did you, you uh-huh. know? Uh, I mean, all those two ones. I mean, Olivier Giroud, I think his time in England is done. Mm-hmm. He's over, well over 30 years. He should be thinking about retirement and what better place to go back than home, France. Paul Pogba to Juventus. That would be a good deal, but uh, you look, it's all two or three years ago, Juventus let Pogba go to Manchester United. Mm-hmm. One, two, I don't think Pogba is done with England, so mm-hmm. I don't think he'll be going back to Juventus. Um, the other thing, of course, I think of. Uh, uh, Shkodran, no, what's his name? Uh, Shakiri. Mm-hmm. Shakiri, the Swiss, uh, Swiss guy. He's been signed by Liverpool. He's a very good midfielder. I think that's an ad for, for, for Liverpool. Uh, Chelsea, I talks with uh, Napoli to sign Gonzalo Higuain. Whether that goes through, we don't know, but it's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Real Madrid, uh, Chelsea have also rejected Real Madrid's offer uh, for Eden Hazard. Uh, Real Madrid uh, wanted. They have said that they'll only sell Eden Hazard for 200 million euros. Uh, Real Madrid were ready to offer 150 million, mm-hmm. and his personal deal was going to be 300,000 uh, euros a week. Mm-hmm. But Chelsea are saying, uh-uh, they are not uh, letting the guy not go. Not having it. Of course, 200 million, then he becomes the world's most expensive player. Yep. If that happens, he pips uh, 198 million euros set by Neymar last year. Mm-hmm. So that's all has that. But that's all the rumor and the gossip mm-hmm. that's happening in the football world. So then we move on to athletics, yes. where Nairobi has been earmarked to host the IAAF Under-20 Championship mm-hmm. in 2020 or 2020. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, by hosting an outstanding uh, final edition of the IAAF World Under-18 yeah. Championships yeah. last year, Nairobi demonstrated its readiness, uh, mm-hmm. basically, to take um, the next step mm-hmm. as a championship host. Yes. I mean, athletics is something that it, it's a part of Kenya's sporting heritage, like background and. It's it's our pride. Yes. Um, I mean, among other things, but athletics is the one thing that when you when you you know you go out there and you're like Kenyan sports, athletics. athletics. Yes. So yeah, I think this is very good for Kenya. It is. It is very good for Kenya, and we saw exactly what happened when Kenya hosted the one called under 18, the final edition. Mm-hmm. Uh, the local organizing committee. I have to give to date. I still give my parts off to the Mongi Mode mm-hmm. led committee. They get yep. done. A fantastic job. Mm-hmm. You and I actually attended uh, yep. the, one of the days. I think it was a Friday, and we saw the organization to you know international standards. Uh, I think on the last day of the tournament, the stadium was packed. Yeah. We gave uh, the Kenyan fans gave uh, the world a show that has not been seen in world world, world under 18. I mean, 60,000 seater. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's not filling a 60,000 60, seater stadium for an athletics. Under 18. Yes. It's not very easy. It was a very good move also by the Kenyan government mm-hmm. declaring the games free. Yeah. And uh, that, that that was a very good move. So yes, uh, based on that, the IWF feel that Kenya are ready to host the under 20s. And if they get that note, then the next step for them, of course, is the World Championships. Yep. And 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 I think uh, if they can prove that they'll be able to hold the under 20s, mm-hmm. then we'll be good to go. I definitely think that is a step in the right direction, and I commend everyone who is part of that organizing committee mm-hmm. and the Kenyans who turned up in scores to support other Kenyans and just to watch the games. Yes, that definitely helped. I mean, people came. They were peaceful. Yes. They watched they and watched, they left. And they left and yes. they heckled and, yes. and, and and that's one thing that's very. Uh, I, I think I love most about going to watch games in Kenya is mm-hmm. whether, whatever game it is. Yeah. It's just the banter and mm-hmm. the conversation mm-hmm. and the camaraderie that happens in the stands and everyone identifying as a Kenyan, which is very good. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's what I hope uh, the world under 20 can be able to show uh, when it comes to Nairobi in yep. 20. Yep, this yeah. definitely shows that sports brings us together. It does. There's, there's Almost, yes. almost nothing that brings Kenyans together yes. apart from politics, <laughs> like sports. Yes, politics doesn't even bring them together. No, it, it separates them, yes. but you know, brings them together in small <laughs> Anyway, moving on to our bonus topic. Yes. So to develop the game of rugby, mm-hmm. uh, we need to start playing it at an early age. Mm-hmm. Uh, and do we th- uh, the question is, mm-hmm. do we think it's time that the Kenyan government um, introduces rugby into mm-hmm. the curriculum mm-hmm. uh, of primary school education? Mm-hmm. I think, um, yes, 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, I, did, I, don't, I didn't even need to think about that. Yes. But um, I'm, I know in some schools, yes, you'll have, you know, a rugby coach here, mm -hmm. rugby coach there. But I'll use the example of international schools because mm -hmm. um, I know them better. Yeah. And you've got all sports, mm -hmm. basically, uh, from a very early age, mm -hmm. rugby included. Mm -hmm. And by the time, and, and not even just international um, schools mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. but schools, you know, around the globe, mm -hmm. you'll find that your best players in whatever sport, mm -hmm. but, you know, since we're talking about rugby, mm -hmm. your best players in rugby, we started young. Mm -hmm. You'll have maybe the anomaly, yes. that, you know, started later on. Yeah. But you start young, you develop the basics, mm -hmm. your rugby IQ is just very different from someone who started much later mm -hmm. on. By the time you get to, I don't know, 16 or mm -hmm. even, not even 16, you're eating, right? Like if you're, if you're sort of channeled into some national team mm -hmm. program, mm -hmm. you're eating right from a very early age. Mm -hmm. So by the time you're 18, you're mm -hmm. built like a house. Mm -hmm. I mean, for most people, <laughs> which is a big difference when we see like Kenya maybe yeah. play against a, you know, a proper setup, maybe a New Zealand young 18 year old. Yeah. So yes, definitely um, something that I think the government should think about and not just for rugby, but for all sports. For all sports, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, I'm just thinking about like uh, there's a documentary I watched about rugby in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, former Walsh centre Gareth Thomas did a tour just before the British and Irish Lions tour uh, last year in New Zealand, and he did a tour to New Zealand just to understand what makes the All Blacks tick. Yeah. And uh, there's one thing he came out uh, realizing and discovering is that in rugby, New Zealand is a religion, mm -hmm. and they start playing very young. Yeah. He actually attended games of kids who are maybe four, five, six, seven years, mm -hmm. and they're playing tag, what mm -hmm. you call touch in Kenya. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't need to really get into contact. You don't need to tackle, yeah. Exactly, but you get the basics right. Mm -hmm. You get the pass right. Mm -hmm. You get how to hit the gap. You yep. get how to offload, yep. continuity. You know, yep. those the small, small basics, mm -hmm. handling, handling skills and all that, that's what it gets into you at a very young age. Okay. Uh, I, I think about uh, former uh, New Zealand fly have Dan Carter. Mm -hmm. Dan Carter was watching an interview and he was saying for his eighth birthday, mm -hmm. his dad bought him posts. Oh wow. Uh, like he's oh. been, he'd been kicking, he'd been kicking yeah. ever since he was eight. Mm -hmm. And that's where when he got into the pros, and that's why he's the highest test point scorer because mm -hmm. of his kicks, you know, he's, he was a very accurate goal kicker. Mm -hmm. So yeah, coming back home, I think that it's time the government do consider introducing rugby into the curriculum and, 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 and at a primary level. Yeah. Uh, it does happen in some schools, mm -hmm. the St. Mary's and the works. Yeah. It does end international schools, as, as you've mentioned. But to the general public, to the, to the majority of schools, mm -hmm. it has not been introduced. And I know the main issue, and unfortunately, uh, it's going to sound bad, but I know the biggest issue is because the people who are developing this curriculum are ignorant mm -hmm. of the game. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when they think about rugby, they think about violence. Yep. And hooligans. And hooligans yep. and all that. They're very ignorant about the game. And therefore, they realize they, or they think that introducing the game to the kids at such an age mm -hmm. is a mistake. But in all honesty, it's not a mistake. It's you'd be doing a plus. Mm -hmm. If your fear is kids getting injured, make it touch. Yep. You know. Actually, from a very uh, early age, I think uh, from kids when kids are like uh, below seven, yes, you don't play tackle. Yes. And even even when you do, it's. First of all, you teach them how to tackle. You yes. teach them how to tackle properly. Yes. No one is launching at anyone else. Yes. Um, you don't have contested scrums. You don't have contested rugs. Exactly. So it's, it's really not, I mean, it's, it's nothing to worry about. It's nothing to worry about. And I just think that um, if, if, in all honesty, I do believe, like we've said it countless times, the potential is there in this country. We have the talent. We have... Uh, the enthusiasm in the players. I mean, look at the young kids who normally go to Impala yep. and Nandis yep. just for the training sessions. You can see the enthusiasm in the kids. Can you imagine if you make it now countrywide? Yep. Can you imagine the talent that it's going to produce? Can you imagine if people in Western Kenya were exposed to this game from when they were, from when they were Exactly. Can yeah. you imagine the, yeah. the talent that we'll be producing? So yes, I do think that it's time mm -hmm. that the government considers introducing rugby to the curriculum. Make it touch. Yep. If that's your problem, make it touch until a certain age. Yep. From age 10, 11, 12, they can start tackling yes. each other. Yes. And then I can guarantee you, give it 10 years, we will see the process of this. Yep, that is how something becomes a culture. Yes. I think it's it's about time that we do it from within, yes. rather than have your, I, I mean, uh, guys like you are seven yes. with Bessie Pride, they're going all over the globe, yeah. basically, um, spreading rugby, you know, spreading the rugby gospel. And that's very good. Mm -hmm. But we shouldn't have to have someone coming from the UK yes. to teach us something that we, well, we, it's, we know, yes. we've got it here. Yes. Why can't we do it? That's true. Yep. That's so true. That, that would definitely be a plus in the system. Yeah.
What do you guys think? Oh, yeah. Um, tell us which schools have started it early. I mean, we've, we've mentioned a few. Ngaro has mentioned a few. Yeah. Of course, we've got the international schools. Yeah. But um, maybe your brother, sister, goes to a school where they play rugby at a very young age. That's true. We'd like to know who these guys are and how well they're doing. That's true. Uh, also, you can find us on social media. That is by following us on Instagram, liking our page on Facebook, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. I'm Dini Madafil. Now I'm Ngaro Kamuya. See you next week in episode 18.